Friday. Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 374 for Tuesday the 18th of November 2014. My name is Robbie Ferguson, and tonight we are going to be looking at uh, basically the first in our series on how to create a, uh, a thumbnail gallery, a photo gallery, using PHP and HTML. We're going to learn some skills over the next few shows. Um, tonight is where it all begins, so stick around. I've also got a, uh, a handful of your viewer questions that were sent to live at category5.tv, which we'll be answering for you tonight. And so if you've sent in a question, make sure you stick around. We're going to do our best to get to that for you. Sasha made us over in the newsroom. Hello. Hello. Here's what's coming up in the Category5.tv newsroom. A new NVIDIA beta Linux driver has been released, and this is one of the biggest updates in a long time. A report from the Wall Street Journal claims that U.S. government planes are collecting phone data. Russia's presidential library wants to create a replacement for Wikipedia, offering a more accurate information about Russia. And a five-year-old has passed the Microsoft exam, making him the youngest Microsoft certified professional on Earth. World of Warcraft subscribers are suffering crashes and long waits to start playing after its new expansion pack became the latest video game to suffer uh, computer server faults. And social networking giant Facebook said its new messaging service now has more than 500 million users worldwide. Stick around, the full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring Sasha Dermatis. Hillary Rumble. Krista Wells. Eric Kidd. And your host, Robbie Ferguson. Introducing Belltone First, a revolutionary new hearing aid. So small you can hardly see it. So comfortable you can hardly feel it. For the first time ever, you can control hearing aids directly from your iPhone. Pick up the phone, listen to music, and use your hearing aids like wireless headphones. Hear everything that matters. Try Belltone first. For a free trial, call 1-800-BELLTONE now. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And way over there in the newsroom, Sasha Dermatis joining us tonight. As you, uh, as you may notice, we're a little bit sparse as far as staff goes tonight. And uh, welcome to November here in Barrie, Ontario. It is as blustery and wintry out as it will ever get, I'm sure. It was quite the that. drive in tonight, wasn't it? So I thought, you know what, I'll just grab the camera, run out to the front door. Here's what it looks like at our front window. Well, about a half hour ago. There it is coming down and it was probably it's just been non-stop um, since that time so we've just been seeing this kind of snowfall coming down uh, but here we are we're ready to uh, to have a great show have a lot of fun uh, but we are uh, lacking a few people so I don't see any audience members made it in but I know you made it in I appreciate you uh, being here tonight GWG is here as well uh, hasn't been able to join us live uh, as frequently as, as he would like. Nice to see you. Also, uh, hello to DJ Quad, uh, Cool Dude, Cirrus Minor, Bob K54. We've got a lot of you joining us tonight. Sasha, what do you think of the shirt? What a great sweatshirt you have there, Robbie. Hey, wait, you've got the same one, don't you? I do have the exact same yeah. one. Very comfortable. I can't wear it in the newsroom because oh. Oh, right. yes. it has a green logo. Wonder so. what would happen. You would be able to see the Barry waterfront in in the five, right? Is that what would happen? I, I guess so. Yeah, I guess because it's kind of chroma key green. But how would you like to have one of these cozy sweaters? Oh, look at that! Hey, I can get I can get rid of the glare. 
So perfect. I figured and it out. Also, look like the Unibomber. I'm gonna have to wear a hoodie <laughs> every week from now on. So I'll just welcome to category five. Uh, yeah, these are uh, once again available for you, but uh, you can get one in time for Christmas. Oh, and we've got the T-shirts too. Limited edition. So these are all limited edition uh, shirts. You can get them at uh, teespring.com slash category five. That's T-E-E-S-P-R-I-N-G dot com slash category five. Let's take a quick look here. Teespring.com slash category five. So if you order one of these, you're going to get it in time for Christmas. There they are. Limited edition, full logo, category five shirts. Get them in time for Christmas. They're going to be shipping at the very beginning of December, and you can pick up Wow, do you guys hear that? I'll tell you all about it in just a second. But you can get this uh, in time for Christmas. Perfect gift for somebody on your list that loves the show. Uh, or just for yourself. Great stocking stuffer. There you go. Did you guys hear that? When I first came in tonight, uh, I, was, I, I was sitting here with my hoodie on, and I heard that, and I, and I thought that there was some kind of ginormous mosquito here in the studio. So I jumped around like that because I never heard anything like that. It's so windy and blustery outside that our door is squeaking like a mosquito. Yeah. <laughs> That's just how, how it's So, go yeah, I, I probably want to point out that it's not a live feed. The Barry Waterfront picture behind me is not no. a live feed. I don't remember okay. who said that in the Well, you know what we room. can do, Sasha, is we're using Telestream Wirecast tonight. Yes. So with Telestream Wirecast, let's see. Let's grab that closer to live feed. The blustery feed. Let's see how it looks. There you go. This is a a little more accurate. And there. There's Sasha with the live feed. Maybe we could do that every week. Have a little bit of some some local weather out behind (laughs) us. (laughs) That's how it looks, folks. And uh, yeah, but we're going to have some fun tonight. Um, I mentioned these because they're available in time for Christmas, but also because um, it really helps us. Uh, as you order product from Category 5 because uh, we do need to get a new uh, video camera. Uh, We're working toward that. We also need to get better internet service here. Uh, Our internet service has been surprisingly reliable. We didn't realize that LTE, I didn't realize LTE was going to be as reliable as it is. (laughs) Every time that happens, I'm going to laugh. But uh, while it is reliable, while it is quite fast, uh, LTE is also also quite expensive. So we want to put some antennas up that are going to give us um, more affordable internet service here at the studio. But also the camera is a big thing as well. We want to get a 4K camera so that we can do a lot more with the show and give you some exceptional tutorials and uh, and uh, especially around broadcasting and how we're able to do some really neat things with uh, working on a camera canvas using Telestream Wire. Cast. Also, another mention, as you're considering your Christmas shopping, head on over to Category5.tv, um, and if I can bring it up here, click on Support Us, and you'll see a link that says Affiliate Links, and when you click on that, Sasha, you know all about this. This is pretty cool. That's right. You can do all of your Christmas shopping on those links, um, and a percentage of that then is kicked back. A lot of the places that you're going to shop anyways, eh? Like Amazon, Mm -hmm. I do a lot of my Christmas shopping on Amazon. So choose the one that's closest to you if you like. Uh, I do tend to use Amazon.com because of the exceptional selection and usually even uh, pricing that beats out the Amazon.ca. So even though I'm based here in Canada, using these links, as Sasha was saying, is going to, in fact, support the show because a small percentage of the uh, commission on each sale is going to go to supporting Category 5 Technology TV. So we really uh, greatly appreciate you supporting us in that way. That's Category5.tv. Click on Support Us, and you'll see the affiliate links there. All right, so tonight uh, I promise you we are going to get started on our new series. And uh, that is what we're doing is uh, we're going to be learning uh, a little bit of PHP and and learning how PHP interacts with HTML. So these are two different programming languages for web. You've probably heard of HTML, of course. That's what your browser outputs to your screen. And uh, But these days, I mean, there are other languages that are used on the web. PHP is what's called a server-side language. And what that means is that it is interpreted or executed, run on the server, and then the HTML is output to your screen or whatever it is that we want to output. 
So in our case, we are going to be using PHP to generate an HTML output of a photo gallery. Tonight we're going to get started with the very most basics. So we're not going to be doing stylistic things um, to any uh, giant degree, but we are going to be uh, getting a little more familiar with the back end of how PHP works and how we can use the arrays that we've learned earlier in the series, uh, beginner to an intermediate PHP uh, here on the show. Uh, we're going to be learning how, to, how those things interact and how we can use those to create this uh, photo gallery, which is inevitably going to become a pretty decent looking photo gallery with pictures from the show. So tonight we're going to be working with the URL demo.cat5.tv slash 019. And so if you're watching this show after the fact, you'll probably notice that our gallery has already begun. Uh, right now, tonight, it is just a blank canvas. There's nothing there, uh, but we're going to get started with that. So using my FTP application, I'm going to edit my index.php, which I've simply uploaded as just an empty PHP file. You know how that starts and ends. And then uh, you'll see that I've already taken the liberty of uploading some images. And all I've done is grabbed some pictures from earlier episodes of Category 5 Technology TV because when we do an episode, we take a couple of pictures and we've got screenshots and things like that to work with. Um, and I, in fact, have a local copy of those as well so that I can preview and see what it is that uh, uh, each folder contains and we can choose which photos we want to use. Essentially, uh, what we need in order to do this with our Part 1 anyways is uh, two pictures for each picture that we want to feature in our photo gallery. So we're going to have one that is a larger image. That's the one that we're basically going to be able to zoom in on. And the other one is going to be what we call a thumbnail. So that's a little tiny image. The reason that we do that is, uh, well, there's a few different reasons. Uh, when you consider the pictures that you load uh, in your browser, so we're going to create, uh, say, a grid of pictures that you're going to be able to click on and they'll blow up bigger. Well, you could use that big one and use uh, width and height attributes of the image tag in order to make them look smaller on the screen. But the problem with that, one of the problems with that is that it's actually your browser that's scaling it down. So one, the quality of the scaling is not going to be perfect because each browser is different. You probably get, get ali aliasing, which is jagged edges on the image when it scales it down. But two, you're not actually resizing the image. You're in fact taking that large image and simply shrinking how, mu uh, how big it is visually. So that means if you've got, say, 50 images, you're downloading the great big image f times 50. So that's a lot of bandwidth to be using just to be able to see the little thumbnail, considering I may only click on 10 of those 50 images. So why am I using so much bandwidth? Why am I slowing down that page so significantly? Uh, I'd rather use smaller images. So we use thumbnails, which we've created in, say, GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program, or we can use Mogrify, which we've looked at here on the show. You can check that out. Just do a search on our website, category5.tv, for an application called Mogrify, M-O-G-R-I-F-Y. And those tools allow you to create other copies of the image that are smaller. Now, I don't, I don't need to do that because I've already done that in order to expedite uh, things tonight. I'm going to bring up my folder here. Let's see what I can come up with here. So we're on episode number 374. Grab my images folder and let's take a quick look at what it is that we're going to be dealing with. So if I go back to 374, you'll see I've got 75, 200, and 320 uh, images. And then I've got one called master. So master is my big image. If I look at that in full size, it's 3,000 pixels by 1,687. So you can imagine, again, if I, yeah, I can do that, and I can pretend that that's a thumbnail, but it is still a 3,000 by 1687 image, and it's still 734.5K. So it's, it's rather large. I don't want to be doing that to my, my website visitors. So that's why, with that particular image, even though it's 3,000 pixels wide, I've already created one that's only 75 pixels wide, and one that's only 200 pixels wide, and one that's 320 pixels wide. You're probably recognizing some of these because we use these on the show, so our system generates all these files. You'll see I've got a bunch of other pictures here that are automatically taken. These are just pictures throughout the course of the episode, and those are just part of our system. We don't actually need those tonight. So we're going to use 75, 200, 320, and master are the images that we're going to be looking at. There you have it. So they're basically just different sizes of the images. 
So we'll choose which size we want our thumbnails to be. Let's say the 200. 200 looks like a fairly good size for a thumbnail, or we could even go a little bigger with 320, but 200 is probably just fine. 75 is much too small, but it works well to have those for us uh, when we need to have very, very tiny little images. Okay, so I know that those files exist, and you'll see with my directory structure, I actually have the same folder structure here, Sasha, for every episode. So here's an episode where you and I were chatting, and there's the picture, there's the 320, there's the 200, right? Next episode, same thing. I've got a 200, and I've got a master. So I've, I've got a, a lot of stuff to work with, but I've already created the files that I need. I've got the thumbnails, and I've got the larger images as well. So we know what, we, what we've got. We know that uh, we're going to be working with two different images. One is called 200, and one is called um, master both .jpg. So we've learned in the past with our beginner to intermediate PHP series how to work with arrays. And tonight we're going to start with the real basics. And as I mentioned here on Category 5, tonight we're going to be learning the, the real basics and interaction of how this stuff works. But over the course of this series, we're going to be expanding this tool, this uh, photo gallery, to incorporate more advanced features, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So if you're looking at this and thinking, wow, that's really, really incredibly basic, it's because we're learning the concept concepts behind uh, wh why these things work. I'm not just creating this and saying, here you go, copy and paste my code. We're going to actually learn a little bit about how we can code this ourselves, how we can take the knowledge and expand it and grow this into other projects. So we're going to start with, uh, let's make an array called Photos. And my first one in the array, I'm going to do it like that, is going to be Notice I've created the array, and I haven't entered any content to the array yet. So I'm going to call the first piece of the array um, small, uh, thumb. Let's call it thumb. And we're going to assign the, uh, the, key, the value of um, where was my first episode, number three images 364. So let's give it the file name. So the thumb is images, if I can type right, 364, and then 200.jpg. That's my thumbnail. Then the master file is images, 364, slash master.jpg. Okay, so I'm typing this out a little bit differently because what we want to do is we want to be able to just create line after line and it's going, to, it's going to create the array. Notice that I've got two hard braces there. So the first piece of the array, the first time through the array, is going to actually assign here an increment of zero. The next time through the array, so if I do that again, then all of a sudden this one is actually assigned one. And I'd like to show you that. Um, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to save this and just upload the file. And we're going to refresh my browser. OK, so notice there's no output. I haven't created any output. Might want to do that, Robbie. We're going to go print r dollar sign photos. Print r is going to output the entire array to my screen. So now when I refresh, you'll see that's actually what my array looks like. Let's look at it a little bit more sane. Array 0, okay, the thumb is 200.jpg, and the master is master.jpg. Nice and easy. So back here, we know that that's the case. So let's start with, let's grab a, let's copy that line again, rather than having to retype it, thumb. And all I have to do is just add 365, and then change the master to, because we know the file names are exactly the same. And again, notice that I'm doing this very verbosely. I'm actually typing in the names for each one. We wouldn't have to do that if we were using a for each loop or something like that. If you're a programmer, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, just follow along, and we're going to learn why it is that I'm doing it this way. So how easy is it here that I can now, now that I've created that array, I can just copy it a bunch of times. I know that my folders are just incremental, so it goes 366. And then the master here is 366. 367 for the master there, and 367 for the master there. So now, if I print R that array, 
and save it and upload it to the server. If you're looking at 019 on demo.cat5.tv, you'll see that the array now looks like this. See? So next up, we want to actually output this as images that we can click on, and it's going to give us the thumbnail to start at the start, and it's going to give us the larger image as we, uh, as we click. So this is where HTML begins to interact with our PHP. Everything so far, other than the print R, is server-side only. You, no you notice before I put the print R, it was an absolutely blank canvas, uh, even though we know that it's actually creating an array in the background, because the array is taking place on the server. Until I actually output something to the browser, there's nothing happening browser-side. It's all server-side. So what I need to do now is say, all right, let's take that and let's loop through our array. However, I am excessively um, cautious, I guess, when I code. I always want to make sure that uh, I'm not going to have um, issues if something goes awry. I want to have a little bit of um, preventative measures in place. So I usually say if is array dollar sign photos, right? So we don't want to do a loop through photos unless we know that it is an array. Uh, and that is not necessary, necessary in this case because we've obviously assigned the array. We know that it's there, but I want to teach you good practices here. So now what we're going to do, that, now that we know that it is an array, for each dollar sign photos as dollar sign, and we're going to go singular, photo. All right. So what I'm telling it to do there is I'm saying two things. First, if this is an array, photos, then I want to do a loop through photos. And as I do that, I want to assign it to uh, uh, an array called photo. So now if I actually type here, notice I removed the original print R. So photos, plural, is not being printed out. If I, however, go print R photo, singular, in that for each loop, because that's what a for each is, it's a loop, and then I upload that and refresh, I'm getting the same general output because photo singular is giving me the that same, there it is, sorry, I didn't refresh. So it noticed that the one, two, three is not there because photo is singular and it's the array only contains thumb and master each time through the loop. So now let's get rid of that print R and let's go echo. Notice echo is going to output something to my browser. This is where I'm doing some HTML. Image source equals. Notice I did a, an apostrophe as my quote so that I can create quotes without having to escape them. All right, because I'm not doing this within quotes. So image source, and I've already assigned, I have the folder and the file name within my, uh, my array. So we're going to go, now I've done the apostrophe. That has now turned off the... Um, the HTML aspect of it to pull something from my array. I'm going to go from the singular array, thumb. Okay, Then I close the brackets. So what I'm actually doing there is I'm taking the thumb. So let's take this out and substitute it in our minds with images, blah, 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 dot JPG. Okay? So we're basically substituting that in there. That's why there are apostrophes there. And that's why there's an end quote there. So now I close that image tag and an apostrophe to close out the PHP echo and a semicolon to end the command and save. So now if I upload that and run it, just by refreshing, you'll see that I've got a bunch of dead links. All right, so but it, it is giving me the image refs. So let's look at the source and see what I've done. Image source equals... Uh, 019 images, not found on the server. Did I not upload them? Let me just double check here, folks. Images, 364, 200.jpg, master.jpg, okay. Images. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Do you see it? I see it. This is an interesting little tidbit for you. Linux servers are case sensitive. And you notice my folder there is actually capital. So I've got two choices. Either I can fix it in my array, 
or I can just rename the folder. So I'm just going to do that. Lowercase i is what I used in my array. So it's absolutely imperative that when you, uh, when you type it, that you use the correct case. Let's see, where are you? Yeah, took it. For 200.jpg, copy that. Let me just give it a quick test. Let's look at permissions. Read and read, yeah, we're good. You guys see it? 200 dodgy. Well, Sasha, that's embarrassing. <laughs> what? Okay, you know what? Why am I not seeing the images when I bring it up in my browser? Let's take a look. Hmm. <laughs> 019. Come on. Really? Does, any, does anyone in the chat room see what I did wrong? Um, nobody's saying anything yet. Come on, say something. Say something. I don't know. Let's see. All right. Jot is explaining to me what you're doing. Yeah, okay. Which is good. I'm just going to backtrack a little bit here, folks, because I, I obviously have missed something in cases or something. So I've got the images folder, right? All lowercase. I've got the folder there, and I've got 200.jpg. My permissions look okay. I've got read access to that. Let's double check. Read, 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 644. Yeah. Check the, uh, the Apache error log. Yeah, I could do that. I could yeah. definitely do that. But let's see if, uh, but it's got to be something You're reading simple. from 019 instead of images, according the file is 404, so you definitely have something wrong. Okay. Um, yeah, I definitely have something wrong. Image mm -hmm. source. Okay. Copy link. I'm going to see here. Do you Bear with me here, folks. Path correct is the other question. What's that? Do you have the path correct? Yeah, I should have. Hmm. Not found on this server. Okay, I'm wondering if... No. That is the weirdest thing. And to have it happen right here on the air live. Is it's always just, best this way. I know. It's most entertaining. It's not, really. it's not. It's not. Unless I have something witty and crazy to say. But you see, that's just strange. Well, the, the great news is we have extra news stories today. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks for, mm -hmm. thanks for that, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> and the last time I did a, a, a segment on PHP, I had a typo in my email address. So that's why I'm just looking back and thinking, okay, what have I, what have I missed here? Image source. Okay. The files are there. Even when I type it into the browser, why am I not getting it? Images, 364. See what I'm saying? Images, 364, 200, master.jpg. Okay, that came up. Am I looking at a cache then? You know what? I'll bet you that's... Let's try it. No, apparently not. Why does it think that file doesn't exist? Let's try just adding... Let's change it to 365. Sorry, folks. It's all part of the fun, isn't it? I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> you gotta Let me be check kidding. Chat room again. See if yeah. Okay. Eight fifty four. Let's go with eight fifty four. That's good. Let's go with three twenty. Yes. What is up with two hundred? I see it on my screen. It's there. 
All right, let's do 320, can we? Just because I'll bet you it's just some crazy yeah, 320, dumb thing that I've done. Yeah, 320, not 365. All right, let's, yeah. Okay, I'm going to replace 200 with 320. It's only the 200 that doesn't work. I know. It's crazy. That's the one I chose, Sasha. How can that be? I know. <laughs> let's re-upload. We're going with 320.jpg this time. Goodness me, what is up with my 200.jpg, right? Right? Right. Thanks for your support, folks. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay, so we know that the 320 file works. It's something up with my file system. I don't... Yeah, it's just... That's what it is. Okay, so 320.jpg in each folder is working. For some reason, there's a problem with my 200. Let's forget about that and pretend it didn't happen. Because we can edit it out in post. Although we don't do that here. So unfortunately, my idiocies make it to air. All right. So now we've got that working. I didn't change anything other than the file name. There it is. Okay. So each one doesn't do a thing. But you see that I haven't scaled them. They are nice and small. Each image. Uh, let's look at the 320 file. This. Uh, look at our master file first. Notice that this master file is 79.3, whereas the 320 file... Is, oh, no, pardon me. I clicked on, uh, looked at the wrong thing. The size of the master file is 108.4K. Fairly large, not too bad. Uh, whereas the 320 is only 22.3. If we go to something that has a higher resolution master file, this one here, for example, is 752K, whereas the 320 file is only 22. So you can see how we're going to save a fair bit of bandwidth, a fair bit of speed by doing it this way. So now... As we loop through this, let's do something else. Let's turn these into links. We're going to go a href equals, and we're going to close that off. Dollar sign photo singular master. Okay, so we're pulling from our array the master image as an href, and then we're closing that off, and then we're going to close off our a href. It gets a little confusing looking when you look at it this way because it's opening and closing and opening and closing PHP. Um, but this is uh, once you see the output. So now let's let's view the source, refresh my source. Uh, let's upload first. <laughs> let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now it makes a bit more sense, right? You can see ahref equals the master file, and then image source is the small one, and then end the a, and then the next one, ahref equals. Okay. We can clean up the output a little bit if we want. We can put a PHP end of line at the end of each one. And because this is in a loop, that is, in fact, going to be at the end of each one. So you see now if I refresh my source, if that's done uploading, yeah. It goes like that, so it looks a little bit cleaner. Okay, So now if I refresh my browser, it looks exactly the same, but you'll notice that it's a link. So if I click now, it takes me to the larger image. Depending on which image I click, I'm going to click on the top right one. There you go. It's taking me to the larger image. So that is the start of, minus the little whatever was going on with my 200 images, that's the start of our photo gallery. So it's very, very basic. There's no formatting, no clean uh, formatting or HTML tags or anything like that just yet. We're going to get there uh, over the course of the series. Uh, it's going to be pretty exciting. We're going to actually learn uh, next week to turn those images into light boxes. You'll notice that as I'm clicking around, uh, it's actually going to take me to the image, and then I've got to click back if I want to see the gallery again and back and you know that's not the way we want to do it we want to actually bring these up into light boxes which is basically a little pop-up that has an X and a next button and all that kind of stuff so we're gonna be learning that next week and then later on in the series we're also going to learn uh, how to load the file names automatically from the folder structure so we don't have to manually create these arrays we can eventually turn that into a databasing system or something like that uh, even though that is outside of the course of this series uh, and then we're also going to uh, finish the series with taking some larger images and using PHP to automatically generate scaled down thumbnails server side so that you're going to get those small 200 or 320 pixel wide images in the browser, but the files on the server are in fact still the master images. So we're going to 
kind of change things up a little bit that way. So if you're interested in PHP in uh, learning to program a little bit, uh, pop me an email live at category5.tv with your specific questions, and we'd be happy to uh, have you follow along. Remember, demo.cat5.tv slash 019 is where you can go to uh, follow along with this particular series. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. Thanks for joining me tonight, and uh, nice to see everybody in the chat room. We're going to jump over to the newsroom real quick, and uh, then we'll be back with your viewer questions, so don't go anywhere. And off to Sasha Dermatis. It's Tuesday, November 18th, 2014, and here are the stories we're covering this week. NVIDIA has released the beta version of a huge update to their Linux drivers. The U.S. government is reportedly collecting cell phone data using devices aboard their aircraft. Russia's presidential library wants to create a replacement for Wikipedia. A five-year-old boy is now a Microsoft certified professional. Thursday's World of Warcraft expansion has been laden by server bugs. And Facebook's new messenger service reaches 500 million users. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Operation Christmas Child is one of the great stories that's unfolding in our lifetime. We are only seeing just the beginning of this project. And these children will change the world. I'm Sasha Dermatis, and here are the top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. A new NVIDIA beta Linux driver has been released, and this is one of the biggest updates in a long time. There are so many improvements in the driver that it's hard to pick out the most important ones. For example, the VP8 video streams, usually found in internet browsers, are now played through the NVIDIA GPU. NVIDIA Settings is now available to take advantage of GT GTK plus three. The performance has been increased measurably, and the limit on the maximum number of OpenGL frame buffer objects has been removed. While only in beta, if you aren't afraid to break your system, you've got to give NVIDIA's 346.16 beta drivers a try. According to the Wall Street Journal, devices that gather data from millions of mobile phones are being flown over the US by the government. The dirt box devices mimic mobile phone tower transmissions and handsets transmit their location and unique identity data back the report claims. While they are used to track specific suspects, all mobile devices in the area will respond to the signal. The Wall Street Journal said it had spoken to sources familiar with the program who said Cessna aircraft fitted with dirt boxes were flying from at least five U.S. airports. Hmm. The U.S. Justice Department refused to confirm or deny the report. That is the scariest news story I have heard in a long time, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Just, what kind of data could be collected beyond your location information and whatever communications? I. But to me, that's enough. To me, yeah. just knowing that if you carry a cell phone on you, you can be tracked no matter where you are. That's true. That is enough of a breach of, I don't know, privacy and individual freedom. And maybe I've been watching too much person of interest, but could that data now be transmitted to other devices for surveillance? Because if, if I know your location by GPS tracking or by cellular tracking, triangulation or whatever is being used, am I able to then pinpoint the uh, surveillance camera because we know that governments are you know known to install surveillance cameras at traffic lights and things like that so could they activate the one where you're walking this is completely theoretical and almost conspiracy theorist but, but you wow. wonder if <laughs> i love the fact that, that they're be. calling them dirt boxes dirt boxes <laughs> yeah because that's exactly what it feels like it yeah. is like just a little bit of a spy tactic uh anyhow Russia is planning an alternative version of Wikipedia, the country's presidential library has said. A statement said the initiative is aiming to provide better information about Russia than is currently available on Wikipedia. 
Analysis has shown that Wikipedia does not have enough detailed and reliable information about Russian regions and the life of the country, it said. Some 50,000 books and documents had been collected to portray Russia objectively and accurately. Given uh, Russia's recent um, political issues, I mm. wonder if this is sort of a la North Korea, where some of the information may be skewed. A little bit, eh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's he's looking at you kind of funny there. I'd be intimidated uh, if I was you right now. I have, a, I have a Russian name, so maybe I'll just blend into the right. background. Can I just can I, <laughs> can I just say? Okay, if if it really was about Wikipedia, do you not understand what Wikipedia is? It's a community-driven project of knowledge. So if if there was information there that was inaccurate, mm-hmm. then that information could be edited by the public, and then it goes through the you know if if it's found to be accurate, then it stays up. If it's found inaccurate, they'll ask for cited sources and so on and so forth. Wikipedia, that's how it works. That's why it's such a great platform because you kind of think that it's fairly accurate with regards to the information that it has. It's the world's um, it's the world's encyclopedia, really. It's not accurate enough for uh, Russia. Russia is not Is it an accuracy they- thing or does the, the, the whole it- idea, the whole concept like you say sounds like censorship to me it, yeah it's a matter of perception right so russia wants you to perceive them differently than how others claim i guess russia is so, okay i don't know but in better and far more awesome news <laughs> a boy from england has become the youngest computer specialist in the world I inquire she is now a Microsoft certified professional after passing the tech giant's exam when he was just five years old. <laughs> the test is usually taken by people who want to become IT technicians. Ian, now six, whose father is an IT consultant, has set up his own computer network at home. He told the BBC he found the exam difficult but enjoyable and hopes to set up UK-based tech hub one day. Ian, who lives in Coventry with his parents, says he hopes to launch a UK-based IT hub similar to America's Silicon Valley one day, which he intends to call E-Valley. I will tell you, I will happily work for him one day. (laughs) Wow. Amazing. Five eh? years old. Jeez. Kids got to clean up the room, though. I mean, that network just looks like a bomb, man. (laughs) You've got collisions happening and so on and so clean, forth clean up your toys just saying <laughs> just saying just saying but I brilliant am. i mean f- five years old and the kid has passed the test i'm trying to remember what i was doing at five years old and i'm pretty sure it was learning how to read <laughs> yeah true right? enough and, you and have here to be he is the world's youngest certified programmer way to go awesome way to go World of Warcraft subscribers are suffering crashes and long waits to start playing after its new expansion pack became the latest video game to suffer computer server faults. Developer Blizzard has published a series of blogs since Thursday detailing efforts to fix the problems. These included making servers in Europe unavailable for nearly five hours on Saturday to upgrade the hardware. One company watcher said it was surprising given given Blizzard's experience. Warlords of Drainer, which went on sale on Thursday, is the fifth expansion to World of Warcraft's 10-year-old fantasy role-playing game. It provides access to a new orc-controlled planet called Drainer. A spokesman for Blizzard said, While the majority of our players are able to play, we're very sorry that many are stuck in queues before they're able to get in due to a combination of demand and the mitigating measures we've taken. So if you are a World of Warcraft player, just, uh, yeah, I guess, hang tight. They're working on things. Hmm. That would be a bit of a logistical nightmare if you were to sell a product and your servers weren't able to keep up. Yeah, Can't imagine. I, I, Especially MMORPGs these days where every they've got thousands of people connecting all at once to the servers. and. Mm-hmm. I know the frantic nature that people get into when they're wanting to play a game and, yeah. they, and they can't. I mean... In well, my you plan, experience, you set aside, I set aside the time. If I'm going to play a game, I've got to find a day where I can set aside an hour and actually do it. Right. I mean, in my experience, my boyfriend plays Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. And when he does, if the servers crash at the time that he's trying to play, he can't 
you know, he can't enjoy his downtime. Yeah, and right. And it, right. it gets aggravating. So hang in there, World of Warcraft players. Hang in there, folks. <laughs> so, social networking giant Facebook said its new messaging service has now has more than 500 million users worldwide. <laughs> Users of the separate messenger app have more than doubled from 200 million in April, the company said. Facebook has fi- had faced a backlash after it announced it would be forcing users to download the app to send private messages to friends over the main Facebook service. Users started being pushed to download the app, launched in 2011, in July. That is probably the reason it's um, reached 500 million users. Right, yeah, I'll Robbie? say you can't really brag if you know you've you've tied everyone's hands and forced. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I can't stand the darn thing, and I can't get rid of the darn thing because I use it for communication. Like, just give me back Facebook where I could communicate through Facebook. I actually am not one of the 500 million users. Really? How'd you how'd you do that? We'll talk after the show. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, every time. I've I've got a, an older phone and it's not super super fast but it's cheap. I pay 6 bucks a month for it and that's fantastic. I love that. We've talked about it on the show and it's on my blog baldnerd.com how I did that, why I did that. But as an older phone, slightly older, it works just fine, but if you've got two apps to do the one thing, it's taking resources. So I've got Facebook up and somebody messages me and all of a sudden it brings up this other app. And then I've got a task over, and then it freezes and crashes and says Messenger has stopped responding. Right. That's really annoying. The Facebook app will yeah. not work for messaging. However, Facebook in your browser will still allow messages back and forth. Oh, you hacker, you. Yes. All right. So there gotcha. you go. You don't have to be one of the 500 million. There you go. For all your tech news with a slight Linux bias, visit the Category5.tv newsroom at newsroom.category5.tv. For the new, for the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Dermatis. And oh? speaking of the Category5.tv newsroom, we are looking for something a little less cliche than the news desk. So if you have ideas about possible backdrops and foreground, where you'd like to see me, maybe on a planet, maybe under the sea, maybe on a nice beach somewhere, send in your suggestions. You can send them to live at category5.tv. I think maybe a spaceship with with like some kind of metallic desk in front of you instead of uh, instead of the the kind of traditional yeah. newsroom desk. I don't know. What do you what do you guys think? Maybe do you think if we got you props, you could you could You've got lights and buttons that you'd have to push. Oh, that would be fun. Kind of neat. I'd like that. We could do a little bit of like a Linux, like proper, and do all the different distros. Like, do, is that what they're called? Distros? Yeah. Is that right? Well, do those in the background, like different, and then I could sort of be in it. We could do a little talk about what each one is. Put you in Linux. Yeah, in Linux. As a space. If Linux was a place, yeah. Sasha lives there. Exactly. I'll be in Sasha and Linux land. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I, I We love the green screen and being able to do things like, you know, wave your, your hand or something there, Sasha. And now, boom, she's sitting at the desk outside. Oh, yes. Right? And that's what it actually looks like. Oh, don't put your hand outside of the frame, though. Oh, I didn't that's know. That's the only catch. Mm-hmm. But yes. uh, that's all done through chroma key, green screen in Telestream One Wirecast. So it looks something like this. And when I bring up the shot, uh, let's see. So we've got Snowfall. There's Sasha. Let's turn off chroma key. And that's actually what we're, what we're seeing yes. here. So when her hand got outside of the shot, it's because it's just on the edge of that green screen. So we can pull that off. We can turn the snowfall off. We can put it on. And all these things are done live in real time through... Telestream Wirecast from cat5.tv slash Wirecast. And it's fantastic. And being able to do that is awesome. Uh, we do that through uh, the hardware, the green screen hardware that we got at tubetape.com. But get it at cat5.tv slash green. And when you use that link, that's another way that you can support the show. But they, they got some amazing deals, especially leading up to Christmas. They've got some blowout prices for you. And you can get your own green screen set. But as Sasha says, we want to do something a little bit different with our newsroom. And if you've been enjoying the Category 5.TV newsroom uh, through Season 8, I'd encourage you to get your ideas in live at Category 5.TV. Sorry, I took over, Sasha. Go ahead. Oh, I was just reading in the chat room. I was just reading some of the suggestions. Oh, okay. So, Any so good no. ones? Uh, goats. Of good ones. 
Goats? Goats was one of them. Penguins was another. Penguins and goats. Penguins and goats. Can so we have goats that scream like humans? We That'd be cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's <clears> those. Oh, it's been done. A million times. A million billion <laughs> times. Hey, folks, you remember the Ivy Link plug or the Ivy plug? We couldn't figure it out, so I've got a link for both. Go to cat5.tv slash Ivy Link or cat5.tv slash Ivy Plug. You remember me looking at this thing last week? It is an awesome device. If you didn't see it, get over to episode number 363. No, 373. Wow, time flies. Uh, and you'll find out a little bit more about this device. I don't want to talk too much about it tonight, except if you didn't support their crowdfunding campaign yet, tonight is all you've got. If you're watching this live, you've got a little over an hour that you can pick up one of these on the cheap because it's a crowdfunding campaign. You can get it absolutely dirt cheap. Um, if you wait or if you're watching this after the fact, if you're watching this on demand or through YouTube or Roku, um, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait until these are out in stores. However, we are going to let you know as soon as they're available uh, in Canada, the United States, uh, in Europe, uh, pretty much anywhere in the world, we'll let you know as soon as it becomes available. But right now is your last chance to get one as part of the crowdfunding campaign if you're watching this live, cat5.tv slash ivlink. Thank you to everybody who has supported the show this week. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. Um, I've been learning how this new space works for us as far as our month-to-month -month expenses and there are some really real expenses that um, you know it's just inevitable having a great space like this and and this is new if you're new to the show know that um, this studio space that we're in is uh, I guess this is what our fifth or sixth week here and uh, it continues to you know get set up and and grow and evolve and and uh, so I appreciate everybody who's been supporting this process and especially, um, you know, as as we move forward, helping us to get that new video camera so that the show can look as good as possible so that we can present it to new advertisers and, and all that kind of stuff that, you know, it's chicken and egg scenario. If you look great, advertisers will want to uh, throw money at, uh, at the broadcast. And when that can happen, then... That's going to be a, a really neat situation because we can start doing some really cool reviews. I can't wait to be able to get the latest and greatest and, and do some really cool reviews for you just because we've got uh, enough cash flow through advertising to be able to do that. And that's all part of it as well um, because uh, we're hoping to be able to establish more advertisers here on the show, which is really important for what we do. Keeps it interesting, <laughs> I think. So. Robbie, you yes. keep it interesting. Do I know you do. It's you? It's you, Robbie, because we are low um, one yeah. co-host. I should say yeah. that Category Five TV is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat Five TV slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Cat Five TV slash IAIB. Well, thanks, Sasha. No problem. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find our, our website, category5.tv. Make sure you check us out. It's an absolutely free service. Uh, we are volunteers here at the show, and we appreciate each and every one of our viewers participating in the chat room, being a part of the community. You can register on our website. Absolutely free, category5.tv. And speaking of, uh, let's say hello to some of our newly registered viewers. Can I hand it over to you, Sasha? Absolutely. We have Andrew Bates 10. Hey, Andrew. Deck Tech. Hello. Um, JWMP 5051. Nice. Welcome. And Nate Naz. So Nate Could it be Naz. Nate Naz. Nate Naz. Nate Naz. Maybe. Perhaps. And DF Bryce. And we'll, we'll just end it at the at. DF Braze. Yes, DF Braze. Somebody who submitted the, the uh, little TMI used the email address as their username. Oh, yes. That's what happened there. So uh. I was say, let's cut it off at the app. So DF yes, Braze, DF welcome Braze. to the show. We protect your privacy. That's right. So welcome. <laughs> Everybody. Hey, have we got some viewer questions that have come in? I know that you're you're just on the news desk and you're getting snowed in over there. Uh, but uh, hey, if you if you could, um, absolutely. Let's take a look at what uh, what's come in this week. We have from P Bogey. Hey, yeah. Robbie, do you have any suggestions for installing a Linux distro on an old PowerBook G4? I've tried various PPC dot ISO downloads. PowerPC. Okay, yeah. With no success. 
most either hang during installation or the is it PPC? Power PC is Power what it stands PC for. Power PC yeah, is and unavailable. Acronyms are crazy. I have right. no clue. Any pointers would be appreciated. Power PC appreciated. is like the old uh, the old Mac processor. Oh, okay. remember the differentiation between Intel and Mac, right? Um, yeah. PC used to be completely different from Mac, but now Intel makes the Mac chips, so they're very very similar. But the older ones were Power PC. Power PC. Power PC. So those are completely different architecture, and so the the Intel operating systems didn't run on them. And that was intentional because they wanted you to absolutely be forced to use Mac OS. But so what happens now? Well, you've got an old, old, old Mac system with a PowerPC chipset, and uh, can you still get Linux for it? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to recommend that you uh, head on over to Penguin PC. Uh, p- pardon me, PenguinPPC.org because that's who's going to help you. PenguinPPC.org. And this is specifically what these guys are up to, is helping you find um, the right distribution for your old PowerPC system. So there's a page on this site, and you can navigate the site if you like, but I'm going to get you right there. PenguinPPC.org slash, and we're going to go about dash two slash distributions, plural. And this is going to tell you all the dif- different distributions. So, Sasha, this was, uh, sorry, what, what model of computer was it? A G4? This G- was a power old PowerBook G4. Yes. It's a PowerBook G4. Okay, yes. so let's take a quick look at what, they, what we can find here. So I'm going to hit Control-F on my keyboard and just type G4. So these are the ones that are known to be com- compatible with the G4, the whatever has been highlighted. So we've got Phoenix, Geeksbox, scroll down a bit. VLOS or VLOS and Yellow Dog Linux. VLOS, I'm not sure if they're still around. Uh, nope, doesn't look like it. Um, but definitely um, Yellow Dog would be one. G4 New World Man. So Yellow Dog, if that is workable. So I think this is just a good resource for you, my friend, to be able to find one that's going to be compatible with that older system. It is an old system, so it is it is going to be what it is, right? So you're going to probably look there and see what uh, what you can come up with. Good luck. Let us know how it goes, all right? And see what uh, what distribution has worked really well for you. But that's an older architecture, so I think Yellow Dog is probably where I would start. That was probably my favorite named one, Yellow, Yellow Dog. Dog. You like that? Well, yellow is my favorite color. There so you go. There you and have you like it. like puppies. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have time for another question, Ryan? Yeah, let's please. Okay. From Old Salt. Hey, Old Salt. Um, hey, Robbie. Been suggesting Linux to a lot of people running Windows, installed Amazing. Linux on a number of them. Um, have you seen JU Linux? This is what I've been installing for those trying Linux for the first time. It is a lot like Windows XP and Windows 7 combined. Let's look at that one. Oh, yeah? No, I've yeah. never, uh, Old Salt, I've never actually looked at it. I was thinking of old salt today, ironically, as I was salting the driveway <laughs> with my old salt from last year. I had a bucket of old salt, and I thought, oh, I wonder if old salt's around today. How neat. Yeah. That's funny, because old salt has another question <laughs> immediately after oh, yeah? another one. Okay, yeah, well, so. let's see what, what kind of time we have. So this is uh, JU Linux that we're looking at, um, and I have not seen this before. Um, but yeah, I can see the menu system looks very much like... Uh, Windows 7, that's cool. Um, so this uh, is recommended by our viewer, Old Salt. Um, there's the uh, the address that I came up with. So, hmm. Give it a look. We'll have to give it a whirl. But that's, that's kind of all the time that we have for tonight. Thanks for the suggestion there, Old Salt. Um, I love finding distributions that help, and I love what you're doing. You're, you're seeing a need of people who are coming away from Windows XP, say, uh, even Windows 7, with, uh, with it kind of fizzling a little bit, but, um, and helping them find an alternative that is comfortable for them. I love Zorn OS for that. Sasha, you're running Zorin OS, and yes. how great is that? So what you've done is you've effectively found a distribution that is going to ease the transition so that they don't think, hey, I'm running Linux, what do I do? How does it work? No, it doesn't work like that. Instead, they're looking at it and saying, well, this is pretty fast for my old computer. It's faster than Windows was. 
it works. It's got my internet connection. It's got all the stuff that I use. It's got email. It's got my ability to you know, play pogo games and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's really what's important: email, internet, pogo games. So you're set, right? So well done. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I am Robbie Ferguson. You'll find me on Twitter there, at Robbie Ferguson. Uh, also, don't forget to check out our website this week, category5.tv. Sasha, thank you so much for braving this nasty weather this week. Yeah, well, it helps that I work one block away. <laughs> there you go. So she made it here. The question is, are you going to make it safely it's home? It's going to be so a, yes, you're gonna have to drive over at Category 5. Yeah, it's just, it's nasty out there. And it's been snowing nonstop. The wind, the window is going crazy over here. We've been hearing it all throughout the show. I don't know if you can hear it at home, but we sure can hear. So that's it for us. So have a wonderful week. Don't forget to visit our website, category5.tv. Send us your questions live at category5.tv. And we'll see you next Tuesday night. Good night. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. 